Now I want to briefly touch on the subject of the BMS. If you are reusing the XR battery, you have basically three options. Either you sell your BMS, you wire it for charge only, or you reuse it as is. The easiest option is to keep the battery box as is. You don't touch it, you just use the existing BMS and the whole setup you don't have to even open it up. Um, it also means you're reusing the existing wiring harness and stick it straight into the controller. The only customization this requires is you will need to reuse the momentary switch that comes with the um, original one wheel. That whole switch you have to make your JST connector to connect to the desk and you have to solder the blue wire essentially to the battery plug. The nice thing about the solution is that you get the auto power down feature of the BMS and you get a reliable BMS with all the protections that it offers and essentially the peace of mind that comes with it. Just remember that the VESC doesn't actually communicate with the BMS, meaning if something starts going wrong with the battery, like it's getting too hot or one of the cells is going bad, the BMS will not tell the VESC that that's about to happen. And that means when the BMS decides to protect the battery, meaning shutting it off, it will just cut power and the, that could result in a surprise nosedive in the worst case. But still, this is your easiest and best option. And one downside I should probably mention is the battery limit. If you're using the stock XR battery, it's probably not that big of a deal that you're still limited to whatever it is, 30 amps or so. Your battery can't really provide more than 30 amps anyway. But if you're using some CBXR battery, the, like a 3P, 15S 3P battery, those, they can provide a lot more amps than the stock XR batteries, so the BMS will actually artificially limit it. And that's when you may want to consider options B or C. The next option is charge only. This means that you're still using the BMS for charging, but you're bypassing it for discharging. So while you're riding, the BMS is not involved at all. You have a wire that goes directly from the battery to the controller, not through the BMS. So what you need to do is the XT60 connector going into a BMS needs to be split so that the wires go directly to the controller and the other ones go to the BMS. And then you will also need a third wire that goes to the controller because the charge port is on the controller side. And for that, it might actually be best to have a custom harness, meaning have your three wires directly in a shrink wrap instead of trying to reuse the existing one. You could also reuse the existing harness, but then you also have to find a space for the extra wiring. I don't know, I personally, wouldn't want to mess with it, but I'm sure some nifty hackers will find a way to do that too. Now, what do you lose? A, you don't have any BMS protection for your cells while you're riding. So if the cells get too hot or if the cells go out of balance or if one cell goes bad, the BMS won't interfere, meaning the battery will keep supplying power to the controller until an overall low voltage is reached and the controller decides to shut it down. And if the battery were to get too hot for some reason, then uh, that also wouldn't be detected and the BMS would not protect the battery there. What you gain is you get extra amps. Basically all the amps the battery can deliver are now available to the controller. But you still have a reliable BMS for charging. And your last option is to rip it out. Take that BMS, you can sell it for good money. People pay like about $400 and more for the, the BMS, and then you can probably get another $100 for the 
wiring harness so that if you do plan to get rid of your or to replace your battery with your own or a custom battery then that would allow you to get that money up front and finance your replacement battery with it all you have to do is you connect the xt60 from the battery directly to the controller a lot of people ask me where the wires are switched i don't know i'm not a future motion expert i don't know when they did the switch and i know that in some batteries the plus and minus are wired the opposite from the industry standard from what i understand on purpose just to mess with people that that are trying to repair or upgrade their battery but i honestly don't care at all why why is that such a big deal you take a voltmeter you stick it in there and you measure and then you know right if it's wired normally then you're good to go if it's not then when you make your wire harness you can flip it there or you can take the xt60 off and resolder it the right way whatever you choose but as long as you have a voltmeter I mean, if you're trying to do this kind of work you obviously should own a voltmeter and then measure it and you'll know right it's not rocket science what are the risks when going without a bms well basically you have no balancing no protection for your cells when riding and when charging and obviously no built-in power switch with power down auto power down but what you gain is a lot of money and um, no artificial amp limit from the BMS. Yeah, it's entirely up to you. If you're not sure what to do, then go for option A. Keep it as is. That's the safest. And if you're planning to just buy a stock replacement battery eventually, um, I think Chai Battery now makes a 19S battery that fits into an XR enclosure, then just hold on to the standard BMS. Don't even open up the battery box. And once you get your new battery, then you can still sell your BMS and presumably the thing will be just worth just as much as it was before, as long as it still works. So I forgot one more thing. If you're going for option B or C, then because you're losing the protection in case there is a short on the controller or something is uh, going wrong on either side, it is good practice to add a fuse into the wiring harness or anywhere. You can put it in the controller side and the battery side. I like to put it in the wiring harness. That way it doesn't take up any space. And so you want one fuse that is something like 60 or 80 amps for discharge and then a 10 amp fuse for charging. Yeah, so using a fuse is a good idea. Uh, if you're using option A, then you don't have to worry about it. Also, obviously, I decided to go with option A. I do plan on making my own bigger battery eventually. But for now, I just want to ride a stock XR battery and see how that does. I hope this was helpful, but let's go on with our build.